Hello everybody, since the fall season is getting into full swing, we have decided to once again demonstrate the vector power of Adobe Fireworks to show you how to create a holiday pumpkin vector graphic. The exact graphic you see on your screen is the one I made during this video, and if you would like to see how to carve a spooky or smiley Halloween face into your pumpkin, let me know in the video comment area, and we'll do a part 2 continuing this video to show how to carve a face into the pumpkin after you create it. So let's create new fireworks PNG and I'm going to make mine about a thousand wide by 600 high resolution 72 because I'm going to output this for the web. First thing I'll do is grab my pen tool and I'll draw the center section for the pumpkin. And this you might have to try it a couple of times to get the right shape. And you have to be comfortable with your pen tool. Now what I'm going to do to make mine perfectly symmetrical is I'm going to put a rectangle on top of that. And I'll highlight both of those, go up to Modify, Combine Paths, and Punch. And I'll take that, press Control c Control v and then flip the copy that's on top, put those in the correct position, highlight both of them, Modify, Combine Paths, and Union. Now they're one piece. Now actually I'm going to get a couple of ellipses drawn out just to be my color palette which you can save colors in your color palette but sometimes I find it easier just to put some circles up here and have those be my colors that I can always access. I'm going to set up a dark orange. We're also going to have yellow and some green. And we're going to make that like a uh, more of like a forest green or an olive right about there. So those are the colors I'll be incorporating. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go to gradient and I'm going to give it an ellipse gradient and where it is white I'm going to change that to yellow and where it is black I'm going to change that to the orange. Now I can manipulate that ellipse on that shape and I'll put it towards the top. So there's the center section of my pumpkin. Alright let's grab this put it into view better and uh, now let's draw the second section. So we'll grab the pen tool we'll start right about here click down let go come down right about here in the center and click and hold and then manipulate that arc so you get the shape that you want and that looks good to me I'll click down there let go click down here let go now I can take that one and press control shift down arrow key to send that to the back and I can manipulate that gradient as well now let's draw the third one grab the pen tool again let's start right about here Go about to the center, right about there. Make the arc that you want. Come down, around, click down right about here and hold, and then you can bend that arc a little if you want right there. And then click down here and send that one to back too. So highlight it, control, shift, down arrow key. And you can manipulate that gradient. Now we'll draw the last one in. Get the pen tool, start right about here, get about to the center, make the arc that you want bring it on around click down here click down there and then we'll send that one to back as well and let's put its gradient up top now what I'm gonna do is adjust these gradients make them maybe a little bit bigger so I'll hold shift down while I'm adjusting that to make both sides go see I'm making both sides grow and shrink as I hold shift So I'm gonna make that a little bigger just to get the yellow more dominant in there. Right about there. Bring that one up to about there. I'm going to highlight these three by holding shift down as I select them. When they're all three selected, press control C, control V, and then flip those horizontally. Grab them, put them in place on the other side where it looks like they should go. Looks like 28 Y position matches these. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to highlight all of those and deselect the one in the center by putting my mouse over it and holding down shift and then select that one and it'll deselect that one. So you can see I only have the outside one selected, but don't move them. With all of those selected, let's go to filters. I'm going to add shadow and glow. Uh, let's add inner shadow. Now let's deselect all of those just by selecting or hitting the white area of the canvas. And then you can grab these three. And what we're going to do is take the shadow 
make it a different color more like this orange but we're gonna make it a little darker now by going to the color wheel bring down the brightness of it okay and we're gonna make it reach in further and we're going to fade it out a little bit more and we're gonna turn the angle on it to be more towards the bottom and the same for these I'm gonna grab those three the inner shadow you can also do the center one now if you like shadow and glow inner shadow let's make it that dark color right there make it come in a little more not too much on this one there we go and let's angle it to go the other way a little bit like that and then we'll take our gradient and put it on this side a little more right about there and really that inner shadow I don't want it so dominant I'll bring it down to about 30 something I'm gonna highlight all of them I'm gonna give them an inner glow what's that shadow and glow inner glow and I'm gonna make that a dark orange so let's darken that up a little bit more right about there fade it in make it come in a little bit more fade it make it a little darker bring it to about 50 okay now you can grab these independently and you can mess around with the way the inner shadow is angled just to have them if you don't want them to be so symmetrical in their shadowing like this one I can take this inner shadow make that one a little darker if I want and change its angle a little bit if I want and I can also select a couple of these like say I want to grab this one and this one and this one and I'm gonna give those an inner shadow and I'll deselect this one for now and I'm gonna work on these two and what I'll do is go down to that new inner shadow and I'm gonna make it white and then I'm gonna bring it around to where they're angled on the bottom right about there I'm gonna make it only about two make it a little more sharp and then bring that down a little bit so you can add like a little bit of shine on some of them if you want and like this one I'm just make that inner make that one white and then angle it maybe that way and let's make it not so bright there I just noticed I had the shadow on these three going the wrong way I think it's supposed to be down there instead of on top actually right there that angle and make them a little bit darker so you can see what I'm talking about so I'll move the angle to be more towards the bottom where the shadow is down here and let's just go ahead and make sure these three have their shadow set up right bring it all the way up and you can see I have them angled all wrong it's supposed to be down in the bottom there okay and this side we can not fade them so much just so it looks a little bit different from the other side right about there looks good actually you can even bring those in more if you want instead of 12 right about there on that side and you can grab some independently like say you want this one or maybe this one to not have such a deep shadow you can get it independently and make it not so deep you see that way you can make it look you can manipulate the symmetry to where everything's not exactly symmetrical on both sides it might have different shadows you can move these gradients around to give it different lighting effects there let's move maybe this one down a little bit so you can see it just busts up the the symmetry a little bit if you do that so let's grab those gradients move them around a little bit okay let's grab all of those and at this point I can press control G to group that whole set now bring it down a little bit here and now we can draw the top the green part on top the stem okay so let's get our canvas where we need it to where we can see really good and let's grab the pen tool now what I'm gonna do is draw a shape starting right about here and I just clicked and let go and now I'm gonna hold down when I click this next time right about here and then I'm gonna go around to right about here click and hold down then go to right about there and click let go and then I can go right about here 
click hold down curve it in right about like that click down here to make a sharp point then we're going to come down to right about here curve that line then we can go right about there click down then come to the other side meet that point click down now we're going to change the gradient on that to a satin we're going to change the colors in that satin gradient to this green that we made earlier and then we can have the other side I don't know maybe a little bit darker green on the gradient grab that thing and send to back by pressing control shift down I'm gonna bring it up a little bit right about there then I'm going to give that an inner shadow select the filter of shadow and glow inner shadow I'm gonna make it a very bright green so I can change that in the color wheel from green to a very bright green like that if I want I'm gonna make it come in a lot more fade it make it come in a little more than that that looks good actually that inner shadow is a little bit much right about there is good and the color on that inner shadow I'm gonna make it a little more yellowish there we go and on the satin let's make that a little more yellowish too and then mix it a little more with that green so it's not so yellow there we go now I'm gonna give it maybe an inner one more inner shadow of a dark green on top that way so let's make that the dark green let's make that a hundred percent and let's see how that looks that looks okay now I can take my pen tool and make a little shape that fills in this little maybe right about like you can pick any shape you want for that but right about there will make a good looking cut press down on that point to make a sharp edge and then just curve it in now that one you can press control shift down arrow key to send to the back and it'll kinda look like it has a cut there especially when we shrink it down and make it small I can hold control and mouse wheel to see how things look from a distance and that looks okay so what I'm gonna do is grab everything I'm gonna press control C control V so I have a copy and this one I'm gonna modify flatten selection now I can really take a good look at what it'll look like when I shrink it down for the web page so let's go back to hundred percent by mouse wheeling and holding control and now you can see the size that it's going to be on the web page it looks really smooth and even as small as I want to make it it'll have nice effects on it and all the effects will be noticed really well so you can see all three different sizes actually it looks best when you start to really shrink it down to be icon sized.